the 338 Lapua versus the 308 Winchester. We're talking long range cartridges today. Let's get to it. Everyone, this is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Now, Chris, we compare a lot of incomparable cartridges to each other here on this podcast, and uh, definitely today we're really going out in the left field because we're comparing the 308 Win, which is no panty waste when it comes to long distance, definitely to the 338 Lapua Magnum, which is uh, I don't know how you say it. it it's, it's a European word, and I, I am I'm an idiot, but the 338 <laughs> Lapua Magnum. And that one, I mean, that that's one of the sniper cartridges. You look at the, the top 10 confirmed sniper kills, and 338, pretty high up there next to the 50 BMG. Definitely, definitely is. And, uh, you know, the United, none other than the United States' own Chris Kyle holds the number 10 spot with the 338 Lapua Mag on that uh, oh, on the top 10 list. Yeah, they don't even name the number one guy. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's no unnamed. Bragging rights for him. Yeah, only at the... Uh, only at the barracks, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, the 338 Lapua. Now, this is a big one. And you're right. Uh, I mean, let's let's just call a spade a spade here. I mean, the 338 and the 308 don't really compare other than the fact that they're used as sniper rounds. Uh, because the 338 was developed as a, you know, a bridge between the 50 BMG and the 308 or the 300 Win Mag. Mm-hmm. Got a very odd caliber. You don't see a lot of point three three eight diameter bullets, at least on this side of the pond. Yeah, it's definitely not something that was typical for the time, but they really liked the the heavier bullet, obviously, and they wanted to be able to punch through military grade body armor at a thousand yards. And to do that, you need some pretty impressive sectional density and ballistic coefficient. And the three three eight definitely delivers in those categories. Now, when you say military grade body armor, you're not talking about the eighth inch thick sheet metal that the m855 bullet was designed to penetrate oh no we're talking about the good stuff here we're talking about ceramic plates uh you know hardened steel ar500 armor yeah we're not talking about that uh well let's just say the the test stuff for the uh the m855 or the ss109 no this is this is the heavy stuff that they were talking about got it so this is like an apc versus a car door you're talking about Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. I mean, the 338 is an incredibly powerful round. Uh, really can get out there well past 1,500 yards based on, you know, the longest confirmed sniper kills that we can see on there. And, uh, yeah, it definitely adds a lot of range where, you know, the 308 just can't get out to that distance. Yeah, you said the 308, we could kind of reasonably put its effective range at about 1,000 yards, right? Yeah, yeah I think so and with, with I, proper I loadings. The 338 pretty much doubles that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the 338 really gets out there easily supersonic past 1,500 yards. And uh, 308 is it's pushing it. You've got to load it pretty hot to get it out to 1,000 yards and keep it supersonic. You can. Uh, with my beloved 175 grain Sierra Match Kings, you can do it. Uh, but for the most part, usually your 308 starting to starting to lose a lot of velocity right around 900. It's funny, I was just writing about some ammo the other day, and there it is, your beloved 175 grain Sierra Match King. Yeah, I, I, I can't say Chris Doolitt's preferred bullet. That's true. I, I don't know why they haven't quite given that that uh, that title yet. I'm going to have to call Sierra and see if they can do that for me. Hey, you know, if enough people listen to this podcast, maybe we can do a crossover brand deal with Sierra called the 175 grain Dwellet. The Dwellet the 175. The Dwellet. I like it. Yeah, I I'm really just, like I just it. mispronouncing names up and down the street today. It's okay. That's mine's European too, so it's all right. You're forgiven. I think all of our names are European. Yeah, probably. Well, That's for sure. Uh, but no, the, the not his, Chinese people. Yeah, definitely. But the uh, the origins of the 338 were actually pretty interesting. Uh, and so uh, it was back in 83, actually, that they started development on the 338. And uh, um, it was Research Armament Industries, or RAI, which is now a defunct company. Uh, but uh, they started it. They, they got the military contract. They said, hey, we want a 338 caliber to kind of get in between, you know, the 50, which is really, let's be honest, it's an anti-material cartridge uh yeah that's a lot of bullet it is it is even though it does hold the top spot for the longest range uh you know sniper kills it really wasn't designed for that it's very effective at it but it was really designed for anti-material and they want to 
get out there to distance, right? They're like, our 300 wind mags aren't doing it. We want to get out further. And so RAI took the 416 Rigby, which is one that you don't hear too often. No, that's an elephant cartridge. It is. It is a much older cartridge made in 1911. Uh, no reference to the firearm here, uh, you know, the Colt 1911, of course, but uh, it was originally designed for cordite uh, as the uh, the propellant, the 416 Rigby was. Oh, that's that spaghetti. Mm-hmm. We sold that before. It looks like spaghetti inside of the case. It does. It's really strange compared to, you know, like extruded powder like we have today. Uh, so basically, they just took this 416 case and like, all right, we're just going to neck it down, right? We're going to neck it down to 338 caliber. And the problem was, since it was made for cordite, it couldn't handle the pressure of all this smokeless powder that they were jamming in the case. And they had multiple case failures while they were doing this. And so it's like, you know, money starts running low. The military is like knocking on their door saying, hey, where's our new 338 round? We're ready to go. And so they hand it off to, uh, you know, the Finnish company, Lapua. And they're just like, okay, you guys are going to have to take over this because we can't handle it. And Lapua did some really cool stuff with metallurgy with the case on this. Good. So an elephant gun turned uh, elite sniper cartridge. And it's interesting to me. I didn't know that the 50 BMG wasn't really conceived with the anti-personnel applications in mind. And I feel like that's the, the big thing to, you know, we're comparing it to the 50 BMG. We shouldn't be given the name of this, but uh that, that is that is very interesting. This one's for 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 people. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you think about it. I mean, the three three eight is basically a fifty light. Uh, I know a lot of people refer to it as that. Uh, but uh, talking about the metallurgy of the cartridge, I find this incredibly interesting. What they did basically was they used. Uh, well, let me see here. I, I have to admit that I have my my history pulled up here because I can't remember all of it. Uh, they did uh, it basically what's referred to as a hardness distribution. So uh, they went from hard to stop, hard to soft from the, the face of the cartridge up to the mouth. So it's harder at the bottom where the primer is all the way up to the case mouth. It gets softer and this allows it to handle quite a lot of pressure that the three, three delivers. Huh? So the brass gets, not thinner, but but suppler towards the mouth. Yeah. And I would imagine that it, it can expand more efficiently that way. It mm-hmm. keeps the pressure off of the base. It's fascinating. I thought it was really cool. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Lapua had the same issue with this 416 neck down to 338 case. They're like, okay, we can't use this because it was basically blowing out cases. And so they completely redesigned the case for it, which I think is really cool. And uh, I mean, these bullets are coming out like, you know, about out of Hades, uh, was designed initially to fire a 250 grain bullet at 3,000 feet per second with 4,800 foot pounds of energy behind it. That's huh. some power right there. So that's roughly like four times the bullet of a uh, M193 load. Oh, pretty yeah. It's just pretty much the same muzzle velocity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the muzzle velocity is the same, but the foot pounds are just through the roof. Uh, and that 250 grain bullet can can move. We'll just put it that way. It can go and it maintains that, uh, you know, that velocity at distance, which is really the key. Oh, yeah. It's that momentum. Such mm-hmm. a fat bullet. Still not quite the, the 50 BMGs bulk. I know those go up to 660. Oh, yeah. Two, 200, 250. Huh, that is like it's like a 45 ACP bullet, but with a uh, with an AR-15's muzzle velocity. Yeah, which is a scary thought, if you ask me. Uh, because that thing is screaming. But, you know, a lot of that velocity comes from the case capacity. And, I mean, case capacity is almost double that of 308. Uh, 308 clocks in at like 56 grains approximately, while your 338 Lapu has a whopping 114 grain case capacity. So, I mean, it is night and day difference between these two. Hmm. Interesting. And that, of so- course, that, of course, has its downfall as well. And that would primarily be recoil. Yeah, I imagine this one ain't a light kick. No, no. Uh, You know, some people complain about the 308 recoil. I think it's fairly mild, all things considered. But the 338 Lapua is literally double. Do you get twice as much rifle to try and nullify that a little bit? I never uh, fired one person. I haven't either. I wish I had cracked the pulled the trigger on one. It would be quite an experience. Uh, Typically, your rifle weights are not going to be double that. I mean, you can 
definitely get a heavy rifle, right? If you get a 338, you can look at, you know, something from Accuracy International or, uh, you know, Desert Tech or something like that that can really be pretty chunky uh, and soak up a lot of that recoil. But, uh, you know, for the most part, you don't necessarily want to be carrying around a 20 pound rifle. No, not really, especially when you're hunting. I was thinking if this is developed from an elephant uh, gun round, then it must must be able to take anything on land. Pretty much. I think with appropriate shot placement, you could take down a Cape Buffalo or an elephant. Uh, I know that uh, usually you want to go something in the 400 range for an elephant, but I think a 338 could do it with proper shot placement. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've heard people using much smaller rifles than that to take elephant. Oh, yeah. They were probably they were probably nuts. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I agree with that completely. The last thing I want is a bull elephant charging me and I don't have enough bullet to put the thing down. No. Nah. No, so, I mean, how else are you supposed to smuggle ivory out of Africa? I don't know, man. Uh, you know, no one's ever asked me about that. Ask me in the comments. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Ivory? Yeah, no. ammo.com is going to love that. Uh, I'm just joking, guys. No, I've never done that. I've actually never been to Africa. I'd love to go sometime and go and, you know, see some of the wildlife preserves. And, uh, you know, if the missus doesn't know, maybe you do a little uh, springbok hunting. That would be fun. But I think a 308 is going to or a 338 is going to be a little too much bullet for a small game animal like that. Yeah, unless the thing is standing 2,000 yards away. Yeah, right. Uh, and I'm going to be honest with you. And this is this is one of the things that uh, I hear a lot of people justifying the 338. is like, well, I want to have that extra range. And I get that. And I'm never going to tell you not to buy something if it's what you want. But if you're going to shoot that distance, you really have to practice because the calculations that it takes to shoot out that at that range are insurmountable for most average shooters. I'm lumping myself in that category. So before anybody sends me hate comments down below, uh, trust me, I don't know how to shoot that far. And it brings up the question for hunting purposes, do you really need a 338? Dave, what are your thoughts on this? Look, like you, like you say, I don't want to assume any of our listeners are, uh, you know, incapable. Oh, of course. If you want to, if you want to spend, what do these cost? Like seven bucks a round? They can. The cheapest stuff I found is about five right now. But uh, yeah. who knows what the way prices are going? Right off the bat, I mean, practicing with this thing until you're competent is going to set you back. Might oh, want yeah. to get a second job. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, I'm like you. I mean, if you want to use this thing for squirrel hunting, that's your God-given right as an American. Darn right. Yeah. Two, 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 two feet? Use it for self-defense. I don't care. But uh, you got your homework cut out. I mean, these military snipers do math classes that would make guys like me and Chris just scratch the top of our heads like apes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And they spend years doing it uh, to be able to go out to that distance. Uh, and, you know, you mentioned uh, the squirrels. I mean, listen. I'm all about detonating a squirrel, guys. Uh, and, you know, it sounds fun to me. And I mean, if you want to put the thing down, man, you can guarantee it's going to be down. But I hear a lot of people using this as an excuse to get it. And if it's your bag, go for it. I fully endorse that. Yeah. You want to exercise your 2A rights and by all means, my brothers and sisters, you go out there and you get it done. Uh, yeah, but the only real yeah. crime is not using enough gun to go hunting. Exactly. No such thing is overkill in the woods. In my opinion, overkill is underrated. And I will always say that, you know, always bring enough gun that you can handle. But, you know, you hit on the price issue. And I think the big thing that you're going to need to understand is if you really want to practice with your 338, you're going to have to reload. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want to keep your cost basis down, you really have no other option to do it other than reloading unless you want to buy substandard ammunition. And who is going to want to put substandard ammunition through your $7,000 338 bolt action rifle? Give me some context here. How much cheaper are we talking about if you load your own versus buying, uh, you know, buying the Sierra goodies? This is a really tricky question to answer, to be honest with you, because... First off, price of components is all over the place. Uh, but I will say that 338 bullets are not the hardest thing to find. Uh, they're definitely out there. You can definitely get them. Usually what I see on my cost savings for reloading is around 40 to 50% cost reduction right. per round. The thing is, what I've always found with reloading is basically you don't save any money. You just get to shoot that much more, which is always a uh. good thing. It's like learning how to bake. It's the same problem. Right. 
Exactly. It's like, sure, you can bake your own bread, but now you bake two times as much. And it's kind of the same thing with reloading. Uh, you know, it, it's a wonderful hobby. And I really think that if you want to shoot 338 a lot, you really need to invest in a decent setup. Uh, get yourself a nice press with a good uh, scale to make sure your charges are being weighed out appropriate. But let me tell you, if you're going to reload 338 with that case capacity, you need to be buying the eight pound kegs of powder. Otherwise, you're just selling yourself short. So <clears throat> big takeaway here. Uh, yeah, me and Chris are both pretty much insisting you go get a 338. Oh, definitely. But your average Joe, 99% of the, the guys out there, they're, they're really going to be better off with a 308. I think so, honestly. You know, if you just want to get a, a rifle that can shoot at range, and I actually had somebody email me and ask me this question. And if you want to email me a question, feel free to email me, Christopher at ammo.com. Uh, but he said, hey, what do you think is a good long range, uh, you know, intro package? And I'm 308. Absolutely. What I'm going to tell everybody when they come say, hey, what's a good, you know, package if I want to get out to six, seven hundred, eight hundred yards? 308 all day. 2D338's credit. This is not some uh, weird niche military round. I'm looking at mm -mm. a map and man, from Albania to, to the UK, even even Malaysia uses this for its military snipers. So I think oh, yeah. the fact that there's over two dozen militaries out there that, that use this thing day in and out, that's a pretty big uh it's a pretty big patent of credibility. Oh, I mean, think about it. The, the what are they refer to it as the arm of freedom, otherwise known as the FNFAL, uh, mm. shooting 308 all day long. The 338 has been widely embraced all around the world too. I'm looking oh, at yeah. this map. We got Bangladesh, Chile, Denmark, Georgia, and I ain't talking about the state. You know, <laughs> the state where Coca Cola comes from, uh, Israel, Malaysia. I don't know what they do in Malaysia, except now I know they fire 338. So they probably shoot it from one one island to the next, right? I couldn't even tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what the range you get with that three threat, you probably could. Uh, but you know, it, it really is becoming more widespread. That being said, as you mentioned, 308 is just everywhere, which is going to drive the cost down, which means you're going to be able to shoot for cheaper, uh, which is yep. always important. And practice has got to be the number one thing when you're shooting distance. Plus, you get all that mill surf 760, 251 Which is when you go 308. Beautiful that's thing to go ahead huge. and pick up. Mm hmm. Definitely. No, I, I think that's really what it comes down to. I, when you look at the ballistics, they're not even close, right? I mean, 338 just dominates the ballistics cal category muzzle velocity, energy, uh, sectional density, ballistic coefficient. It just blows the 308 out of the water because it's not even in the same class. But the question is, do you need all that ballistic advantage? And only you can answer that if that's what you want. I'm going to uh, hold off this one. There's no way I could ever practice enough to get competent enough to justify buying a $7,000 rifle. I don't even buy a $7,000 car because right? I'm just going to crash it. Especially with prices these days, my goodness. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you on this one, Dave. It's going to be 308 for me all day long, just because the availability, the price, and all the options that you have uh, for 308. Now that being said, if you have always wanted to have a 338, if that just trips your trigger, then you go out and you get yourself one. And make sure you get all your ammo here at ammo.com. Uh, Dave, what are your final thoughts on this one? My final thoughts is forget everything Chris just said. Go get a 416 Rigby. That's, right? That's the money rifle. And go hunt elephants like it's 1911, not the gun. Or, you know, you want to get really crazy, go ahead and get yourself a 408 Shaytac while you're at it. Do that. You know, don't do any of that stuff. Be a real man and learn karate. Oh, that works too. Take those elephants down hand to hand. Yeah. Could you imagine how quick you would die? Pretty sure you're not going to feel anything if I had to guess. <laughs> And you know what? Maybe you that's can bury you in a pizza box, though. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Especially if the poor thing steps on you, it's going to be over pretty quick. Oh, uh, poor but, thing. But yeah, but guys uh, and gals, of course, you know, get what you like, shoot what you like. Make sure you're getting out to the range, get that practice, and like I said, get all your ammo here at ammo.com for your best prices on ammo. Make sure you click on that link down in the description or the pinned comment. Get your free coupon for twenty dollars off your next order here at ammo.com and we appreciate each and every one of our subscribers make sure you click that like and subscribe button and we'll catch you on the next one